The Lord Jesus established the ordinance of the Lord's Supper for his followers to remember his death until he returns. We do this by taking the bread which represents his body and the juice which represents his blood. If you're a follower of Jesus, you are invited to participate. We will look at a passage of scripture to help us think about what Jesus accomplished when he died upon the cross. Let's ask the Lord's blessing as we look at this. Father, as we turn to your word, I pray that you will bless the truth to our hearts as we, as we hear, as we listen, that we may participate with greater gratitude than we would have before. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't have a Bible, raise your hand and the, the men will place one in your hands. We're going to take a look at the second chapter of Ephesians. And if you don't have a Bible, you're welcome to keep the one that you will receive. In Ephesians 2, verses 14 through 16, we read about how Christ's death on the cross removed enmity, which had separated two groups of people, and also how his death removed enmity between all people and God. In order to give more background, we're going, to, we're going to begin reading at verse 11. Follow along as I read Ephesians 2, verses 11, and we'll read through four, uh, 16. Therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the, co to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by it having put to death the enmity, this passage comes in the middle of two chapters which deal with the uniting of Jews and Gentiles into one body, which is the church. What's amazing about this is that the Jews and the, and the Gentiles were quite divided because of what Paul calls the barrier of the dividing wall. Jesus is called our peace because he broke down the barrier of the, of the dividing wall. An illustration of the division between Jews and Gentiles is described by Josephus. He says that there was a wall in the Jewish temple dividing the court of the Gentiles from the court of the Jews. At intervals were stone inscriptions which stated that no foreigners were permitted to enter Jewish enclosures upon penalty of death. Well, what was the dividing wall that Paul is describing in this verse, in verse 14? Verse 15 tells us what, it, what the dividing wall was and how Jesus broke it down. It says, by abolishing in his death the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances. The dividing law, wall was the Mosaic law, which, was, which created enmity between the Jews and the Gentiles. It was given specifically to the Jews. They were God's covenant people. Gentiles were outsiders. The Gen Gentiles are described in verse 12 as excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, and without hope and without God in the world. But now the Gentiles who were far off are brought near by the blood of Christ. In Christ, the old covenant came to an end. This was the, in keeping with God's promise through the prophet Jeremiah. 
He said that, Behold, days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers. That is the covenant of the law of Moses. The author of Hebrews, in referring to this passage from Jeremiah, wrote, When he said a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. The Last Supper with his disciples, Jesus said to, to them, This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Now both Jews and Gentiles can enter the new covenant promises through faith in Christ. He makes the two into one new man. Christ's death on the cross rendered the law inoperative in the lives of believers in Christ, whether Jew or Gentile. When Christ died on the cross, he paid the full penalty of the law against all the sins of all who would believe in Jesus. That penalty was death. Now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. They are no longer under the law, nor under its condemnation. What the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh. We are now under a new law, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The requirements of the law are fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Looking at the end of verse 15, we see that the purpose of removing the enmity was to make of the Jews and Gentiles into one new man. Does this mean that all Jews and Gentiles no more have enmity? Well, notice that it, it is in himself that Jesus makes the two into one. It is only Jews and Gentiles who are in Christ who have the enmity of the law removed. Jesus creates a unity that surpasses any differences of opinion or any difference of lifestyle that for those who are in him. They have a unity that is foreign to any of the relationships which people of this world have. Verse 16 reveals that both the Jews and the Gentiles had an enmity with God. The law showed both groups as unacceptable to God because of their sins. That enmity must be removed in order for any to be reconciled with God. And Christ satisfied the wrath of God against the sin, uh, their sins when he died on the cross. When a person comes to believe in Christ, his sins are forgiven his, and the righteousness of Christ is imputed to him. God makes those who are, were at enmity with himself to be his friends. They receive the new covenant promises of a new heart and a permanent ministry of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Not only do they receive the gift of perfect standing with God, they also receive the enablement to walk in his ways. This is a walk which is not possible for those who are un under the law. That is why scripture reads that it is, if we walk by the spirit, we will not fulfill the desire of the flesh. And that if we are led by the Spirit, we are not under the law. Christian, as you partake of the Lord's Supper, remember the great price Christ paid for you in order for you to be reconciled to him. Turn from any desire for self-glory and seek the glory of him alone. He is the only reason you have any hope of assurance now or eternally. If you've never come to trust Christ alone for your salvation, consider this. The law shows you to be without any grounds to stand before God. If you're depending on your own goodness or your performance to have acceptance with God, you will fall far short. It is, God, it, it is by grace through faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross that anyone is saved. It is not of works, otherwise you would boast. It's a gift of God. If you've not received this gift, we ask that you refrain from participation in the Lord's Supper. It is for his followers alone. Please consider and respond to his promise that if he who comes to him, I will know, 
and no wise cast out. So men come in service, and when your heart is prepared, you may partake.